back to the Hanging With Web Show right here on HWWS Web TV. If you're watching on Facebook, keep watching. If you're watching on YouTube, keep watching. Hit subscribe. Smash the bell. That's what all the kids are saying on is smash the bell. Get notified. We have authors, artists, filmmakers, creative minds of all kinds right here on HWWS Web TV and the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Punisher. And you are in for a treat because we are hanging with author Gary Timbrell, the author of Lunar 3097, The AI Chronicles. That's a long title, dude. Well, the title is Lunar 3097, and then it's it's part of the three book series. Yeah. Three book series, okay. It's the first one in the three book All series. All right, Lunar 3097. Mm -hmm. um, Gary, why don't we go ahead and we'll start by telling everybody. Give us the short book blurb from the back of the book. Give us what is this three zero well, three zero nine seven about? It's uh, based on the fact that places we want to go in space are so far away. It takes light years to get there, and you can't send humans. So we send robots. We do it today. We send robots to Mars, but we're sending wheeled units that are always getting stuck. So eventually, we move on it's to human humanoid versions because hands and feet are get you more places. It is um, one of the most remarkable things in, in as transportation should go. We have spent the better part of 30,000 years trying to find ways not to have to walk places. Yes, we have. But when it's all said and done, the best design for going places ever made is right here. Exactly. And we worked that out eventually. <laughs> so now we're going to do it backwards. Yeah. So we spent all we... those time trying to get the wheel. <laughs> now we're trying to get off our wheels and onto our legs again. Because we find out that's definitely a better way to go. It is. It and really is. So, Lunar 3090 is the first one in the in the trilogy. Yes. Okay. Uh, kick us off a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what we're gonna where we're going. Well, we find out that the the limited intelligence of a robot isn't enough for us to be able to explore planets properly, like we would if we were there. Now, so, those of you out there on the internet who think that your phones are really smart. <laughs> Remember, most robots of any kind, computers, robots, are only as smart as the people who design them. Exactly. We can only give them so much information to work with, and we have this remarkable ability as human beings. We can make stuff up on the fly. We there can you improvise. Go. There you go. Yes. And a computer is only capable of improvising to the best of its programming. Exactly. Well, these robots uh, end up with artificial intelligence, and then they become self-aware. I just want you all to know, we all know where this is going. <laughs> Hijinks is fixing to ensue. Well, what they didn't think about was when they sent these robots on one-way missions, with se being self-aware, at some point we were going to discard the robot. So these robots are being sent out one way and then left for eternity on barren planets around the galaxy and the universe. And this one young lady named Abby in the book decided to do something about that for this particular robot. And what she did was create a situation that allowed the robot to make its way back to Earth. I just want to say, if you abandon anything self-aware, <laughs> that, that being will not be... Ha Have you all read Mary Shelley? That being is never very happy when he comes home. That's part of the problem, but that's the second book. The there first book go. is about how he how he gets get, home, how he starts to get home. Yeah. That's amazing, man. How long have you been writing, Gary? I've uh, three and a half years. Three and a half years. So, um, in in as cre as a as a creator now, three and a half years. Um, what was the transition for you like from uh, what did you do before? Well, I still am. Uh, an electrical engineer. Electrical engineer. Yeah. So when he talks about robots, he like knows stuff. Yeah, I know a little bit about them, but uh, he fixed my mic earlier, so he's, going, <laughs> he's doing all right. Um, so electrical engineer, which is that, that's a hard science in every way, in, in, in every definition. Yeah, it's a beautiful it science. It, it, it is. Um, it. Now you come over here. The creative arts is a very soft science. Mm -hmm. um, what was that transition like for you? How's that been? It, it was very easy for me, actually, because I already had this idea in my head before I ever wrote the book 
and then my daughter challenged me to write it. And after the fifth chapter, I handed her the book, and, or I handed the chapter. Said, "See, I told you I could, I could, anybody could write this." And she said, "Well, that's not a book, Dad. That's just five chapters." Ah. Oh. So it took me a year to finish it, but I found myself moving from the hard science into what you're calling, or I would call the artistic side of my brain. Yeah, it is. My brain. This is a very art. It, 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 the arts is is um. It, it's very, it, we're more flexible. Yeah. And, and suspension of disbelief doesn't require that something works, only that you believe it does for the length of this chapter. And that's what's so great about science fiction. You can make something up and people have to believe it. That, yeah, and if they can suspend their disbelief for just the length of that chapter what, or the length of that book, that's right. um, then, then you've done your job. And, and um, coming, writing science fiction though, coming from a hard science background, Mm -hmm. did, did, did that feel like it made it easier for you to write these characters? Some, write these of, the, some of it was, uh, came easily, but other parts, I've seen, I've been watching science fiction obviously my entire life. So I've noticed, I notice things all the time that... When they get it wrong, you're the first they, one that you're like, that wouldn't happen. And now I'm hoping people don't do that with my work <laughs> because you're going to get everything wrong, especially the first book you write, because yeah. you can never think through enough to be able to cover every avenue that they well, can. I'll tell you, and the fans and the readers. They know. They do. Yeah. Um, and, and they know obscure things that you didn't think they knew. A simple uh, I, question. I, I got picked. My first book came out. Uh, it is set in Los Angeles, 1945. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I, I did as much research as I could. Um, and I, I had my character going up the stairs into a, a certain building. And that building isn't on that street. And I, 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 I got a Facebook <laughs> message that told me that building's not on that street. That's not how we did, that's not how we built this in L.A. And I thought, you know. And then they'll tell you it was only a one-story building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're just, it, 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 so they do, they find those things. Uh -huh. and it's, it's, it is, it's hard to do. Um, this is, I understand this is your first convention. We're at Space Coast Comic Con this weekend. That's right. Um, Great guests. We got some great artists, great authors here. Great uh, cosplay. It's an amazing environment. This is your first convention. Yes, it is. Yes. Now, first convention as an author, or first convention period. Well, I've been to one small one with my daughter about three or four years ago, a Doctor Who convention. Okay. And uh, other than that, this is the first actual convention I've been to. Wow. Especially trying to promote myself, well. which I find very difficult. Welcome to an amazing community. Yes. Uh, what do you think so far? How are you uh, doing? I, it's a culture shock. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot more uh, cohesive than I expected. I expected to see little uh, groups of people, but they all seem to gr grow together and go together. You'll see Batman and standing next to Superman, and they get along fine. Oh, know? yeah. So oh, yeah. This is... An amazing environment in that when you're here, uh, you'll see a stormtrooper standing next to a Starfleet officer mm -hmm. standing next to Doctor Who, and, and they're all having the coke. And they're all together, having a great time. They're having a coke. They're enjoying <laughs> themselves. Um, okay, I like this question. We always get questions from behind the camera in case you and I get too busy chatting. Oh, uh, okay. So she sends us some questions. She wants us to talk business. I don't know Again? what's wrong with her. Mm. So, uh, you're electrical engineer. Do you, would you consider building a robot yourself? Have you uh, done any robotic work? I actually work? have a robot under construction to go with the book selling of the uh, of the Raider 2, which is the main character in the book. You're building your main character? Yes. That's cool. Yes. That's something that not a lot of writers can do. I have to build for Cosplay Michael, and I can tell you, I can't work with Craft Foam. So actually building an actual robot is that pretty impressive? Yeah, he'll, he'll do, he won't be moving. He'll just be twisting and uh, you know, motion under motion uh, sensors. So that's pretty cool. And man. I have a couple of lines, but other than that, to build a natural robot, I don't have the time to finish writing the second book, let alone there you build go. a real one. So. There you go. Now, what's the second book called? It's going to be called Coming Home. Coming Home. All right, mm -hmm. it, it done any, not any better than that, huh? <laughs> so, um, first convention. First convention. Meeting a lot of people? I have met an amazing amount of people, and I've got some contacts. I would recommend 
this to anybody that's starting out in uh, in this area and writing books especially because it's so hard to get a start and find the right people to talk to and since I've been here I've had five people now that have come up to me and just things they've said and they've done and all the way to this point we're at right here I wouldn't have had any of this without I had come here it, this is a wonderful convention this is a great environment mm -hmm. and like you said when you first come your first time you kind of expect that there's going to be these little groups and little yeah but honestly this is uh we we call this our our con family mm -hmm. because we only see most of these people at conventions about six times a year and every time is like going to a home going home it's yep. like going to a family reunion mm -hmm. it's wonderful welcome to the community thank truly you. welcome thank you as a writer much. to the community thank you uh i haven't been a writer myself now or uh, uh, a fiction writer myself now for about five years mm -hmm. um it's an amazing community to be a part of. It is wonderful to get tips and tricks and advice from the other writers. It's priceless. Um, uh, you were introduced to us by, of course, Gary Rowan, That's right. uh, who himself is a fantastic reviewer. Who I and met author. here today for the first time. That is fantastic. Gary's an awesome guy. Mm -hmm. um, guys, we have got to wrap it up because apparently we've been chatting. And she gets upset when we're chatting. So we're going to wrap it up. We're going to say thank you to our partners and our friends at Famous Faces and Funnies. Jay Bauer Art, Josh Bauer, for all the art that's on the set this weekend. has come from Jay Bauer Art. Space Coast Comics and Space Coast Comic Con. Hearts Helping Others of Central Florida. That's families helping other families throughout Central Florida. Brevard Film and Talent. We see Sandy Granger in the house here at Space Coast Comic Con. Brevard Film and Talent for helping me become some kind of a filmmaker. Eh. Don't leave a comment on that. I don't want to know what you think of my filmmaking. I'm a decent interviewer. I'm a good journalist. I want to thank our friends at Mommy and G Creations for all of our merch needs and NSC Live TV, uh, as well as Screech Dragon Games. Thank you to all of our partners and friends out there. Thank you for you watching this video. We've been hanging out with author Gary Timbrell. Check out Lunar 3097, the first in the AI Chronicles. Links are down below in the description, guys. Click on them. Go buy a book, all right? Support the indie artist community. Remember, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next.